All right, let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action. This is this week's mystery chart. Notice that it topped out, kind of a triple top looking top. And this was in spite of the market making all time highs back then. Big old thrust lower followed by a pullback. So that's tomorrow's recommendation. It is a short, and I will follow up on this one next week. So we finally. Probably a mystery chart. All right. Now let's follow up on APH. And I want to get into the options that we played on this, or I played on this at least. Anyway, uh, this was a bow tie. Now, a bow tie, to those who don't know, let me go over it real quick. And you could study my website and YouTube channel. And of course, if you really want to learn about more about bow ties and all, you could buy something. But uh, before you do all that, you know, get to know me first and understand the pattern. And before you get into the courses and such, and become a member, of course, too. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in one second. But anyway, bow ties when the bow tie moving averages, which are a, a 10 simple, a 20 exponential, and a 30 exponential. So 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential come together and spread out quickly and give the appearance of a bow tie. Now, if you look below, this is an illustrator that I had programmed for me for bow ties and i think that it's also in meta stock it comes as a canned indicator i'm pretty sure don't quote me on that but if you have meta stock i'm pretty sure it's in there also this is stock charts advanced charting platform acp if you like this video like this video and then you could click the plugin down here and get it for free i keep threatening to charge for it but so far i haven't it's actually the most sans the one i think that comes automatically loaded or which is from stock charts, it's the second most popular, first most popular for, uh, uh, what do you call all those guys, whatever, content providers. So very excited about that. Anyway, when it's in uptrend proper order, 10 grade, 20, 20 grade, 30, this counts the number of days. So it was many, many days, maybe 55 or so days where you had uptrend proper order and then begins to roll over to the downtrend proper order. Now, if it's neither uptrend or downtrend, meaning that the moving average is just kind of meandering back and forth and in no particular order, then it's yellow. So ideally, you want to see it go from green to red for shorts or red to green for longs fairly quickly so you get the appearance of the bow tie. Sometimes it takes a while to cross, and I call it a sloppy bow tie. And if there's some other pattern there, maybe it's worth trading. But in general, the tighter the bow tie, the better, because that means those moving averages came together quickly and have already begun to spread out quickly. So notice we went from green to red. That's one of the better looking ones. A new client earlier was telling me he wants to learn more about stock selection. Well, that's stock selection is a million little things. And, and I spent 14 hours in a course talking about it. But you can pick up a lot of that, not to talk you out of a course, seem to be talking about talking to you out of buying stuff. But uh, you can learn a lot from from my YouTube channel and from my website. And then, of course, become a member and ask me a lot of questions, too, or ask other members. But you want to learn these transitional patterns and and get used to, to finding them in charts and getting back to the pick of the best stocks, like this gentleman was looking to learn. That would be one of the million little things. Look for tight bow ties when you're learning to trade these transitions. Now, I'll touch upon transitions a little bit because I think it's very important in a few minutes. But you want to look for the tight ones, meaning that they go from green to red fairly quickly. Uh, three to four bars is usually my normal uh, parameters that I use for a, a fairly tight bow tie. But when they go from green to red immediately, that's even better. The other thing I like to do, too, is, and we get to the live charts, I'll show you this a little bit. I like to have a 50 simple plotted, and I like to see the angle of inflection, especially on the downside, into that 50 simple moving average. And I'll show you that in one minute. Anyway, so I had a little bit of a pullback. Remember, with these transitional patterns, we don't have the luxury of waiting for a nice, big textbook kind of deep pullback or deep-ish pullback. You sort of have to take the first one that comes along, the first little pullback that comes along. Now, in an ideal world, it would pull back more deeply, like, for instance, if it didn't have this, this bar down here, which actually triggered us in, and rallied up a little bit higher, that would be an even better setup. And that's why I did take this secondary setup, which I'll show you in a few minutes. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <coughs> smooth. 
I got to get some better vodka. Oh, my God. <coughs> anyway, there's the screen capture from the spreadsheet. Uh, 300 shares to short at 62. IPT of 55.50. That's uh, six and a half points. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess I have to save money elsewhere. Anyway, an IPT of people don't know, like, oh, this guy's an alcoholic. No, I don't. I usually don't drink during the week. But after this week, um, I think I'll drink. And I'll drink. Uh, we had to put a family pet down like at two in the morning at the emergency vet place. Um, a hawk murdered one of my chickens, which is, uh, or one of my wife's chickens, which are, these are all pets. <laughs> they have names and they come when you call them and they talk to you. So it's been a rough week. And, and you know, there's this thing called the market that's been all over the place too. Anyway, uh, before I digress too far, imagine that. You can see that it did trigger, immediately went straight back up, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. And it's, trading is really about accepting things, okay? And one thing you're going to have to accept if you're going to short, and last week I talked about why you should short, and it's not the most obvious reason just to make money, because it's the only way to make money on the short side. But there are other reasons you should learn how to short. But anyway, if you are going to short, you better be ready to accept what comes with territory, and that is the old market adage. Now, a lot of adages are, are just BS, okay? Like sell the man, go away, that's total BS. Um, I think uh, Tom McClellan did some presentations where it's actually selling June and it has a slight edge, but it's it's not anything you can trade off of. But that's another story altogether. But this is one one adage that is fairly true. Is it seems like all shorts go against you. Shorts, sometimes you have these sharp retrace rallies right after you get in, covering rallies, so to speak, and they can really muck you up. But fortunately, it did not hit the protective stop, did roll over, hit the IPT. And another, unfortunately, it rallied back up. Now, the stop was 62. Once we hit the initial profit target, we bring the stop down to break even. Now, we will trail that stop again before it's hit because I get asked that question repeatedly. But once it's actually hit, intraday will bring down the stop to break even just in case it rallies back up and takes us out as it did in this case. Now, I don't suggest you throw caution to the wind. But in a case like this, if I was short outright shares, and I still have a few puts, just FYI, but if I was short outright shares, I probably would have let it go a little bit into the negative column. Ideally, you, when you get your first loaf off, the $1,000 on 100K, right? You want to break even at worst on the remainder, but I am willing to let this the remainder go a little bit negative applying a little discretion if it just kind of goes barely past it or just barely nicks a stop that i'm definitely in in a case like this it went about a half a point away on a 60 dollars stock so it's not a huge difference difference uh it wouldn't make that big of a difference in your account so i would say in this case it would be a discretionary call and that call would be to stay with it now without digressing too much into discretion because there's a lot of stuff we want to get into just remember that you have to live with your decision, and that's all about life, is living with decisions. When I when I bought a pet, or actually, this well, we paid somebody, but it was, a, it was still a rescue. <laughs> that's another story. But uh, when, I, when I got this dog 13 years ago because my daughter was crying for the dog, I knew it was getting badly, like George Carlin says. Okay, all trend trades eventually end badly, and I talk about that a lot. So... You just know these things are going to happen, and you're willing to accept these things. Now, as far as accepting with a discretionary trade, when you stay with the position, let's say this thing gaps up 10 points tomorrow. Well, you have to be willing to live with that. You can't have uh, regret with 100% hindsight. As a general statement, a little bit of discretion will help you do well longer term. Now, I can't guarantee you it will always work on the short term, obviously. Now, I want to talk about my thinking on on puts as a substitution for stock a little bit. And, and some of these thoughts in here are a little bit in hindsight, but these are things that, I'd be, that I would look for on the next trade. So if some of this looks like hindsight, I don't want you to think, oh, it's in hindsight, because it is. But these are the things that I do look for in trades, and these are some of the ways that I like to play options. Now, you want to use, and I put someone in here at the last moment, deep in the money puts as a substitute for stock. I don't go, it, it all depends. Sometimes I'll go fairly deep in the money, 
But when I'm trading options as a substitution for stock, especially as puts for a substitution for shorty, the main advantage there, as I talked about last week, instead of putting up $32,000 in margin, you're putting up like a thousand bucks, okay? And also that's the most you could lose. Now, obviously you don't lose a thousand bucks, but it's a lot better than putting up all that margin and then having a stock stock gap 20 points against you or whatever the following day. Sometimes though, if you can make it work. Now, if the underlying stock hits the initial profit targets, target, then you want to bail on half of your options, okay? Or if your options, if you're a little closer to the money and you get a two for one, you go ahead and take partial profit. So uh, for instance, I got in my options at 350. I don't think they went to seven, but I did put in resting orders at seven just for S&Gs to see what would happen. So as a, as a general statement, not all the time, but as a general statement, I will put in, on most positions, I will put in a limit order to flip out half. Now, I don't use limit orders as a general statement, again, when I'm trading underlying securities, if I'm long something, I, I might use a trailing stop if I'm trying to squeeze out a little extra profits. I might exit at the market when IPT is hit. And rarely do I actually put in a limit order unless maybe in a case where it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. I'm not sure it's going to get to the IPT. In that case, I might put a limit in. And if it doesn't hit it, I'm ready to get out at the market. So that's um, a general statement of, of how I, I, I manage uh, the, the, um, the money management, okay? So again, and, and again, if the options go two times from where you got in, take off half, and then you free roll on that. And I'll show you that in just one second. And in the other case is, let's say you go deep in the money and you buy an option at 10. Well, it's probably not going to double. But if you're, let's say, at 15, you've got a 50% profit on that option and you're either hit the IPT or near the IPT or you're fairly close to the IPT, the move happened really quickly then by all means lock in that 50% gain on half. And then in some cases you wanna possibly roll down. Now consider daily setups once you're in, because the great thing about options is, and you got there's a lot of bad things too, but the great thing about options is you don't have a huge capital outlay. So you can go in and you can do some of these secondary trades, like let's say it sets up as an ogre or a Russian doll, which, which happened on APH and both of those setups. Then you could go in and do some options and maybe some S and G type of options. Speaking of S and G type of options, don't go crazy. These are options where you're not paying a whole lot. In this case, uh, 10 and $15 a contract. And like I said to my peeps a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about using some options because I recommended a short, the APH of course, one of the things I point out is like, look, you could buy two options for 30 bucks. They're out of the money. They probably won't get hit. And if they expire worthless, then instead of having a ribeye on Friday night, which I like to have, I'd sous vide them and then I hit them on the grill really hot. Oh, so good. That and tiger stripe pork chops, which are the prime pork chops. They look like little tiger stripes in them. Hit me up if you need the recipes and the stuff. It's just salt and pepper, really. <laughs> good stuff. But anyway, so instead of having that tiger stripe pork chop, which is just as much as a ribeye, then you just have pizza. The point I'm trying to make is if you're putting up $30 on a trade and it fails miserably, who gives a shit, okay? And this this gentleman in my uh, group, he was a little leery about making his first options trade, and that's why I suggested doing that. Most of the time, those options are going to expire worthless. So again, you know, you have your pizza instead of your steak on your Friday for your Friday night dinner. Now, you want to keep your, the, the advantage of options is you're not putting up all that margin. And I'm going to rush through that or go through that fairly quickly in one second, uh, recap some of the stuff we did last week. But your capital outlay needs to be well below what you would risk if you're trading the underlying. Now, you, you potentially could have a bigger loss than the $2,000 per trade per 100K or 2% per trade, however you big your account is, 2% of your account value, trading account. Technically, you could have a bigger loss than that, but as a general statement, usually we could contain the losses to 2%. So if you're trading options, one advantage would be 
to have your risk actually less than 2%. Now, it does get complicated. Like I said last week, let's say the market goes strongly against you, the options evaporate, and then they expire. Then you got to reset. So you could see you could get into trouble fairly quickly. I don't want to make these things look like some sort of, I don't know if panacea is the word, but uh, for lack of a better word, some sort of great thing. They they do have a lot of of issues with them. Tread lightly. Again, maybe do the pizza versus ribeye trade for a while until you get your feet wet. But anyway, like I said last week, so if you were to short 300 shares of the stock, it was round numbers $19,000 and three options came to $1,000. That's $1,000 cash that comes out of your account, but that's also $1,000 max risk. So you're at about half of your normal risk doing this trade. However, again, time is against you with options, okay? And like I said last week, you always think you put an options position, you're like, oh man, I've got unlimited time. Before you know it, you're, you got an expiration staring you in the face. But anyway, you could see I bought the three options and then I got to think, it's like, well, Dave, how am I going to show in this model account that to take profits on? You can't take profits on one and a half option. So I added an extra option and I'll walk you through all the option trades here in one second. Now, here's the thing. In the underlying, there was a $1,500 loss overnight. And and believe me, that's kind of hard to stomach. It's like, oh man, I just got into trade. I'm already down $1,500. Well, it comes with the territory, okay? And it's something that you have to, again, accept. Yes, I drop F-bombs, I cuss and I fuss, but it's like, well, you know what? What am I supposed to do? This is what I'm supposed to do. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, in the options, I didn't check the price on them, but I'm pretty sure they they didn't completely evaporate, but I'd be willing to bet I probably had an $800 loss or something like that overnight. But it didn't hit the stop. Now, here are all the trades I ended up making. And I realized I went a little crazy. And hopefully, you'll see some of the method to my madness as I go through this. So again, just to remind you, that was the original trade parameters, OK? 300 shares, round numbers, 6.5 protective stop. So. Here are all the initial trades I put on. Now, as these options worked out, I ended up putting on more and more trades as I took trades off. And I'll walk you through that in just one second. But you can see, even with all of my initial buying before I began to start flipping these options out, my risk in the model account came to $1,600, which is nothing to sneeze at, but I'm still below that 2% number, okay, if stopped out. And you can see that in this particular case, the original trades were up here, okay? The three were a substitution for stock, as mentioned earlier. The fourth one I added on shortly thereafter, about uh, 10 minutes later, 10, 11 minutes later. And that's because, again, I wanted a round number so I could show the money management, should it work. And thank goodness it did. I did take some S&G trades. I saw these options at $15 an option. These are those pizza versus ribeye options. Good, good chance, really good chance it could expire worthless, but for $15 options, what's that, 60 bucks? It's not gonna kill me, okay? And then the stock made it ogre. I'll show you the pattern in a few minutes. The 60 puts at that point were only 40 cents or $40 a contract. So I figured it was worth a shot as an ogre. And while I was at it, I picked up a couple of more of those 55s. All right, so here are all the trades. And you can see this is all the initial buying here. And as these puts, like last week I showed you, these were bought at 40 and I flipped them out at 80. And I'll show you a spreadsheet in just one second. The stupid spreadsheet took me like four hours to put together. It's like, good Lord. Anyway, this was the original transaction down here to substitute for stock. Again, four options total. And then this is how they played out, knock on wood. So about uh, $500, $800, about $1,100 or so in profits. And that's all, that's completely cashed out. Now, here are all the S&G options. And if you add all of that trading up, and keep in mind that on some of these trades, I was already profitable in other options, okay? And so, uh, 
I know you can't get a little bit pregnant, but I was kind of uh, feeling flush, okay? And I ended up putting on a few more of these options. But if you add all that up, I think it's only like $150 total. So it's not going to kill me. And and yes, there's a really good chance that these things, these things can evaporate quickly or it or expire worthless and they might expire worthless okay it looks like they it doesn't look too good right now but what i do is i take profits on them and i flip them out and you could see if you add all this up the initial price was a was the average price was like about 11 or 12 cents so not quite a triple but close to a triple so it's a one to three free roll so i made three times my money on these options as i flipped them out and the money got decent as you can see down here where they went up uh, tremendously okay and just a, a big profit so this 150 dollar position let's see two four five three hundred eight hundred nine uh, about a grand okay so about 150 dollars and believe me you can't do this every day all day it just worked out really nicely turned into an extra thousand dollars and i still have a couple of these on just for SGs because remember the initial position i guess i should have kept three on but the initial position was a short 300 shares but as this thing was really moving in my favor and all these trades were working i was busy just rolling down and buying more and flipping them out at, at profits so there's all the trades i don't want to bore it's just like i need Working a spreadsheet for four hours, and I'm thinking like I'm going to spend five minutes working on the, uh, presenting this because nobody's going to want to look at the spreadsheet. You know, it's kind of like, spreadsheets are kind of like uh, like spreadsheets to me are like Venn diagrams to Kamala. You know, it's kind of like I, I just like them, but I don't think anybody's into them other than me. I know you want to party with me. So initially, this is where I bought the in the money puts, and of course, we got whacked overnight. Now. It's been said, if you can keep your head while everybody's losing theirs, you obviously don't know what's going on. <laughs> but in trading, especially if you're in options, you know, I'm thinking, oh, this sucks, okay? But I knew I didn't have much more money to lose, okay? Because the option was was mostly evaporated, those three in the money puts. And then I see this opening gap reversal. And I'm thinking that this stock is still in trouble I'm not going to get that excited because this market has gone against me. In fact, I think it's actually an opportunity. Now, don't throw caution to the wind and start averaging down, so to speak, in stocks. That's a bad. That's a bad thing to do. And that's one of the one of my concerns tonight was showing you this because you're like, well, Dave, you averaged down. Yeah, I sort of did. Okay, but I had an opening gap reversal, and then the stock was sort of set up as a as a Russian doll, meaning a pattern within a pattern. It still looked like it was in a lot of trouble, okay? Okay, any questions on all that? I know I kind of zipped through it. So just following up on ULS, we talked about this one last week. It was a accelerating momentum strategy, first deep pullback in an IPO, first deep retracement. Also, it was nice and persistent. And those were the parameters for the buy. Entry there, stop way down here. IPT way up here. And just a follow up from last week. This is what happened last week. And let's see, we've got a newer chart in here. IPT was here. And again, at the IPT, your stop comes to break even. You will trail a little bit along the way. And then you continue to trail as it moves in your favor. So that was the open profits based on the close I screen captured last week on those 400 shares, the 200 remainder. And in this particular case, I don't remember exactly why. I think I applied a little discretion, might have gotten out a little earlier, or was trying to squeeze a little more profit out of it. But whatever the case may be, I didn't quite make that full $1,000 in the first low. So there it is. I just want to follow up on the remainder of it. So we we'll continue to trail to stop on this. And then we did peak out last week so far, but we're not too far away from that peak. This stock still looks pretty good. And it's really defied gravity in spite of everything going on. I don't want to confuse the issue with facts and see what they do or whatever, because that might get me thinking that maybe it'll continue to defy gravity. But as a trend following moron, I'm just going to continue to follow along with this thing. All right, brief update on the TFM 10% system. So I talked about it last week. So the sell would be here, okay, at 40. 
49.32, I believe, would be that number. Now, as long as we could stay above the 50 simple, okay, and while we're hoping for stuff, as long as we stay above the 10% line, that would be great. This line is 10% of the 50 week closing high, minus 10%, okay? So green is within 5% of the 50 week closing high. Five, uh, the pink, or whatever that is, light pink, is greater than 5% away from the 50 week closing high. And then 10% would be 10% or more away from the 50 week closing high. The bottom of this line here is 10%. And Jeff, who's normally with us on Thursdays, he's here tonight. He pointed out that the 5% line is where he likes to get out of markets. And he's going to get whipsawed a little more than at 10%, but he's also going to get out early. So right here, this would have been a whipsaw for him, 5% drop. Turns out it was only a pullback. This one here didn't quite close below 5%. But so far, that would have been a good place to get out. And of course, we bounced back a little today. How crazy was today? <laughs> it's like, I'm looking at the charts. It's like S&P up, uh, futures up 120 or whatever. And it's an inside day. I mean, that's a, that's the biggest inside day I ever remember. I know I'm a nerd. <laughs> and you want to party with me, right? Anyway, so the sale's still way down there. And, and the reason I like to show this every week is to show you the forest for the trees. I am very concerned about this market, and I'll flesh out some of those concerns in a few minutes, especially when we get to the live charts. However, if you're following this longer term system so far, it looks okay. Let's say you were hand testing this, you wouldn't even notice this, this three little three little weeks down or four little weeks down. It's like, eh, nothing to worry about, right? But when you're actually in it, uh, you can feel it. Those are the rules. You can find them on my um, YouTube channel, on my website, DaveLeonard.com. And the buys are a little bit more stringent, as I often say. You need two bars of Landry light, lows greater than that 50-week moving average. So that was our last buy there. The NASDAQ triggered and didn't stop out. It came dangerously close, the NASDAQ Qs, I should say. And as I've said quite a bit, and I've showed the actual trade not that long ago, but I bought three, I bought 100, I wish I had 300 shares. I bought 100 shares at 319.49. And lately, I've been showing you how steep that drawdown is on this system. And today it came back, uh, was at 14 points or so today. It was something crazy. It's like oh, only 100 shares. Those are starting to be significant swings, $1,400 in one day. It's nothing to sneeze at, right? Somebody at Facebook said, hey, Dave, uh, are you still in that position? Because it came pretty close to that 50 simple moving average. Well, it, it came close to crossing it. You don't sell when it crosses the moving average, you sell when it closes below the moving average. And one of the things that's a little scary is it is based on a calendar week and not a rolling week, okay? So it's based on where the market closes on Friday, okay? So tomorrow looks like, you know, knock on wood, looks like we're gonna have survived another week in this. But it's uh, the drawdown lately has been brutal. What's that, 70 points? So $7,000 drawdown on a silly little 100 share position that I just took for SGs to follow a system and show you what following a system is like. And it's kind of, it's, again, you want to part of it. It's kind of fun because I'm able to show you like, hey, look, I just lost $7,000. Not that I'm excited about that, but it's just to kind of show you that if you are going to get into this longer term trend following, the drawdowns are going to be brutal. And again, as I preach each week, the way I sort of solve for that is by taking profits, obviously partial profits, to get it out of some. And I talked about that over the last several weeks. So go in and, and take a look at the playlist for the week of charts. And the other thing I'm going to start doing, I, start, I thought about this this week, is I'm going to start putting more and more of the methodology in action on YouTube. And I started a playlist. There's only a couple things there. But after this week, we'll have one or two more things there. And each week, I'm going to build and build and build on that. So that might be a good way to get your feet wet, checking out the methodology. That and looking at the archives, davelander.com slash archives. And you can see all my recommendations, warts and all, before they actually triggered, right? Anyway, so it did come fairly close to the stop, but it did not close below the 50 simple and the 10% line, okay? But we did trade below 10%, see the bottom, the top of this hot pink is 10%. So we came 
really close to that last week and this week we'll see where we end up tomorrow we could actually close below 10 percent and it wouldn't be a sell signal until it closes below the 50 simple and the reason i'm using that simple moving average in here i really wanted to try to make a pure system with just percentages get out of 10 percent but i found that i needed a little bit of a whipsaw filter now just before i digress too much into it just real quick or not to digress i should say imagine that the when you when it comes to whipsaw filters you got to be super careful because you could end up curve fitting to prior data so put something really simple in there and you know here's the thing and i don't know how to word it eloquently but i'd rather have a a mediocre system that has worked over a long period of time than some sort of gee whiz amazing system because that amazing system has likely curve fit itself to the prior data prior data and the future data will not look like the prior data i've got into a, a heated discussion with a mechanical system developer years ago <laughs> I said, well, you know, your largest drawdown is always in front of you. And he got mad at me, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> but that's another story, two-drink minimum on that.